Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles to people throughout the world. Today, we have Jacqueline Hollows with us. Jacqueline is the founder of Beyond Recovery, whose social mission is to revolutionize the way addictions and mental health are viewed and treated and to eliminate stigma. Having worked with people caught in the criminal justice system for over three years, Jacqueline has seen time and time again how a simple understanding or a small glimpse of what lies beyond our personal thinking can both transform lives and make them more simple. People who have been trapped in suffering are released and start seeing how life can be easy despite their personal circumstances. The work of Beyond Recovery is evidenced by academic research, and Jacqueline and her research team have had their first paper published in international journals. Jacqueline also works with the prison officers and staff who support the inmates in a voluntary capacity. So Jacqueline, thank you so much for being with us. Um, it's our first time meeting, and it's been such a pleasure. And I've, I've read about your work, and I'm really excited to hear what you have to share. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, that was a lovely introduction, and I feel really, um, really honored to be here and, and excited. And I don't know what I'm going to say, so <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, well, I'm really pleased some people turned up as well. So that's that's the other thing. Um, so when I was uh, invited to to attend this and and do a webinar, I was asked about the title, and and I I just read the title uh, again and the introduction before I I came on. Um, that the that freedom is to be found in the prison of of our minds. Um, and I thought that's a good title. <laughs> and then I realized I wrote it. Um, but I thought, well, what did I mean by that? And what do I see by that now? And maybe that's a good place to start. And, um, and so I'll, I'll talk for a bit. Um, and, uh, but I love questions and, um, I love participation. So if you have a question or you want to make a comment or, uh, during our time together you 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 see something for yourself or something's fresh um, either raise your hand or unmute yourself and speak and 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 that would be amazing and uh, guaranteed you won't put me off because um, I just came from prison where we work we were working with 41 guys in a room so like nothing can be more chaotic than that I can tell you <laughs> um, so it's absolutely um, fascinating to me. I, I'll tell you a bit of my background just in case anyone's not heard of me before, not read about anything before, which is that I came across the understanding of the principles and uh, during a, um, a, a coaching program and um, I, I just was not into it at all. I, I thought it was a, you know, a cult or something. Um, I didn't didn't enjoy it. Didn't think it was relevant, and um, I, I just dismissed it. Um, and it seemed to me that by accident and by some sort of other coincidence, nothing related to anything to do with the principles. At that time, um, I was changing direction in my life. I was looking for a new. Um, a new career path. I was bored with what I was doing. I was, I was, you know, I, I've been in IT and business for for over twenty odd years, um, longer, and um, I was simply just, you know, exploring what else. And and that's why I did Super Coach because um, I thought, well, maybe I'll try coaching. You know, I like people better than IT, so maybe that would be a good path. And um, I, after I'd done that, um, I was, I tried all sorts of different things. And, but one of them was that I met someone who had previously had addiction. So he was in what's called recovery. So he was, um, which apparently is a lifelong thing. 
and he um, he was just inspiring. I, I was just totally inspired by this this guy who who was um, uh, you know had had no education. He'd been a heroin addict, crack addict. Um, he'd been in prison, in and out of prison, in fact. And but in the last three years, when he'd been in recovery using the twelve step model. He was inspiring. He was starting um, a non-profit organization, helping other people. He was running detoxes at home. And um, I just thought, oh, I, I, can, I can spare some time. I can help him. So I just sat on his board of directors, voluntary, and just helped him. Um, and we had lots of conversations. And, um, and, and I got introduced to a lot of people uh, like him. So there were, there were people in all sorts of stages of, of um, addiction, active addiction and recovery and just come out of prison and been in prison before and, you know, the whole thing. Um, and I fell in love with those people. So the reason why I'm doing this work is because I just fell in love with them all. I thought they were amazing. I'd never met people like this who had had lots and lots of trauma and lots of um a like a really hard time in life and yet they were i saw this resilience and determination and creativity and i also saw that they didn't see it themselves often and they talked a lot about stigma and the difficulty with getting jobs and, and, and getting on in, in life. And to cut a lot, uh, quite a long story short, I, I learned the principles through them because I saw the principles alive in all of these people. I saw how they were creating their reality. I saw how mind was thriving through them regardless to the circumstances they'd had and regardless to um the trauma they had i saw that how some people would would would, would um be thriving and get over the most terrible things and yet other things would really get them down so i, I mean i literally saw it in action i saw that um on different days people felt differently about the same situation and I saw that how when they calmed down and their minds quietened, um, they came up with amazing, amazing ideas and, and solutions for their own lives that which were tailor-made. And I also, very early on, um, pr pretty much saw that everybody was, was absolutely perfect. Um, uh, I, I realized that they, that I couldn't teach them anything, that it was already within them. And, and I just had to somehow find out how, how to show them that. Um, and so they were my early teachers. Um, and that's, that's how I then got interested in well there must be something in this and 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 maybe it's true so I started sort of looking in the direction of the principles at the same time as being very passionate about um changing the world you know I want I didn't want these people to be discarded and um and written off when there's <laughs> so much untapped potential so the two things went hand in hand and um, there's a journey, you know, and there's a story in, in all of this. But then I eventually found myself um, in prison and, and working with prisoners. And um, again, I, I can say hand on heart, and I see this deeper every single time, those guys are my teachers. Um, so, for instance, today... We've been working uh, with 41 men, which is our biggest group ever. Um, and the men range from, well, in every demographic possible. So um, I think the youngest was 23 and the eldest is probably getting there to 60. Um, every ethnicity you can imagine, 
um, a variety of religions in the room, um, a variety, sounds like I'm making a cake, you know, a variety of um, mental health issues in the room, a variety of um, addictions or selling drugs, a variety of crimes. Um, literally, I think there's everything in that room, you know, and literally seeing real time people lighting up from the inside out. Um, not always knowing what that is, but, but spontaneously um, find it, finding happiness, you know. So, so we, we have, uh, we teach now, we teach the, the guys to become practitioners. Um, so we have the two peer mentors, they're, they're running the group. So it's two of the men themselves that are running the group and, and we're just there as like, you know, um, I don't know, the key holders really. <laughs> That's all we're there for. Um, but, you know, we set the tone and we support the guys, but the guys run the group. And the chaplain came out because we happened to be running it in the chapel. and they can't believe that we've got 41 men in the room and they're all quiet and they're all listening to, to the two guys at the front. And we started talking about, you know, what, what we're talking about and the nature of your true self and personal thinking and, and, and this type of thing. And so we're orientating them in, in the direction and spontaneously a man who's, who's never heard of us before, never, never heard of this before says, this is what this is what's happened to me. This is this is what I've been doing. I found I was sitting in with a doctor this morning, and I realised um, the happiness that I feel inside. That it doesn't matter that I'm in prison. And he says to me, "Why are you smiling?" And he and he said, "I I just realised like it doesn't matter where I am. My happiness is coming from me. Um, it doesn't matter." And he said, "Well, the doctor said, well, I don't understand that. You're in prison, mate." And he, and he said, but I'm, I'm not in prison. I'm only in prison if, um, if I think about I'm in prison. I'm, I'm, I'm in life at the moment. I happen to live here. Um, <laughs> but that doesn't affect my happiness. And this is, this is before he even came to group. So he spontaneously realized that. So that when he's sitting in the group and we're talking about what we're talking about, of course... He sees, oh, this is this is that thing that's happening to me. I see, I see what it is. He until then he thought because he's been doing quite a lot of self development and he wanted to change his life. He, you know, he thought oh, I've worked hard and I've been doing this and, and and this is why I feel like this. But you know, he he realised, and I wouldn't say that every group is um, um, happy hippie land because it isn't. Um, you know, like today we've had a very, very, in the afternoon, a guy who, who is, is just wants to know everything, you know, is very intellectual and he wants to know absolutely everything. Well, why is that? And what do you mean by that? And, and it got very noisy and it, and, you know, got sort of quite heady and so on. But what I see is that people, it doesn't really matter. People get insights people um, get a glimpse of their true nature regardless <laughs> to what's going on in the group. Um, because he's there being loud and noisy and, and asking questions and someone beside me says, you know what I think it is? I think that you're not telling people um, that they need to be true to themselves and then they'll find inner peace. This is another guy that's never been in, you know, he's never heard of what we're talking about. <laughs> so I absolutely see so often and, and uh, daily that everybody knows what we're pointing to. We're born with it. It's our heritage. It's our birthright. We live in it. We are it. We just get it covered up sometime with our own personal thinking. And we maybe don't know where to look 
so we look away or we look outside or we look to these other things but those two things together knowing where to look and knowing that it exists to me that's you know those two things come together and and, and magic happens um so i'm constantly moved humbled um impressed um and and as i said at the beginning like learning all the time learning from from the guys they continue to be my teacher um i'm 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 unafraid of trying new things. I'm unafraid of, of, you know, don't sort of boundaries don't really exist for me. I, I'll just go out there and do stuff. But I do that because I know that there is no, that I, I can't go wrong. It's an, it's an experiment. It's a, it's an exciting journey and, and, and nothing can go wrong. And, and as he said, when I'm true to myself, what, what can go wrong? Um, you know, I'll often say in group, I've led you down a wrong path there, you know, because, because I've got into my head with my ideas and, and my made up opinion about something and it's, and it's come out as that. But as soon as I drop that, I drop back into love and peace and, and only, only useful stuff can come out then only helpful stuff can come come through then and what is also in, incredible and this is you know goes back to the title that there's freedom in the prison of our minds because today when those guys were were you know loud and argumentative and and there was three or four of them and and the two men who were teaching got a little bit caught up with it so didn't speak and then the facilitator as well um was sort of looking a bit lost and a little bit like you know unhappy um and it just got to a point where i thought oh, i've had enough now <laughs> i've had enough so i spoke i said you know right here's the thing and literally the the silence just comes and it feels to me like because everybody wants that Everybody wants that silence, that peace, that, that stillness. Everybody orientates towards it. So it's almost like when the sun comes out, the flowers naturally turn to the sun. Well, we bring the sun into the room, the flowers in the room naturally come out, you know, and, 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 and naturally it raises within them all of this good stuff and and they all want that and um there's no exception so it's wonderful to have a peaceful loving amazing state and and like we had in the morning and and see that you can have 41 people in the room and 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 just be in this state of grace really um and this beautiful feeling but equally when there's someone in the room who's bringing a different element he's not wrong he's not you know he shouldn't be there um, some of the facilitators sometimes go, well, we, we, when's the right time when you, when you sort of count someone out? Well, never. <laughs> um, he's, bringing, he's bringing something to us that, that, that is for us to learn about and is for us to, to wonder about and, and play with. And he's doing the best he can. He's trying to get to it in his way. Um, so I look to then what is it that i'm not seeing because i know that if i see his health and talk to his health his health will talk back and um so i'm learning you know all the times so that again that's why I, I say that the guys are teaching us and there was one other thing that i wanted to mention um which is <laughs> i i i find this so so amusing because 
in the early days when I was like, oh, this is a weird thing, um, I really could not listen or read Sydney Banks. Like it just, I just didn't understand what people were getting from it. And um, I thought it was strange, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Sydney Banks. Um, and I have this thinking sometimes, like we start the group and then we're like, when should we put Sydney on? You know, when's the right time and all of this lot. <laughs> And then you put Sid Banks on and there's this room of hairy, scary men from all sorts of like ghetto type backgrounds and everything else. And the, and the whole place is silent. And then you have like 10 minutes of spontaneous silence following. And then afterwards, you know, this was in the last group, I walked around and I was like, what, you know, what, what, what did you think? How did you get on with that? And, and they go, oh, he's such a wise man. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Like, they really, really hear him. They really hear the truth that Sid brings. And they read The Enlightened Gardener and the missing link. I mean, it's like a book club sometimes when they go, Oh, have you read the missing link? And have you, you know, and they talk about it amongst themselves. And, and then they say, I got this and I got that. And I gave up, you know, I gave up porn and I gave up smoking and I gave up this. <laughs> and I go, what do they read in the, in the enlightened gardener? <laughs> so i constantly realized I have a sick, a lot to learn. Um, so that's very cute and I, I find that I find that very, very cute and, and and amazing to think that those men in a in a prison in the Midlands in the UK that are sort of what one one, two, three steps away from from ever of even meeting or seeing or anything to do with Sydney Banks are being impacted by what he brought to the world and it, it just blows me away every time um so i've been really good look at that 25 minutes <laughs> um i would really love to know if there's anything you'd like to say any questions anything you'd like me to talk about anything that you um would just like to share about yourselves And I can tell a story if you want me to tell a story. Um, go on, Robert. Um, one of the things that I'm impressed about by hearing um, <clears throat> you talk about what these uh, men are going through is I. I for myself, oftentimes, even with the three principles understanding, I still fall into the trap of thinking that if my circumstances change, then I can have a different experience. And here we're talking about a group of gentlemen who, for the most part, their circumstances aren't going to change, at least not immediately. They're in a specific situation, in a specific environment. And what's happening to them is that they're thinking about that is changing and they're having an entirely different experience of it. They're able to experience peace and joy and happiness without anything on the outside necessarily changing. Although I'm cer certain that probably leads to changes, but the, the internal experience happened first. And uh, I find that hearing that very encouraging because uh, again, like I said, I, I still fall into the trap oftentimes of thinking I need to change my thinking for the purpose of changing my circumstance. No, that, that kind of misses the point. <laughs> um, it's the recognizing the fact of thinking, getting into that change of feeling, and then I'll do whatever I do on the outside. Um, but that sort of icing on the cake or even irrelevant, perhaps. So I just want to tell you that I'm really impressed with, uh, with uh, 
Thank you. Can you just say that last bit again? So sometimes you think you need to change your thinking before you change your circumstance. Yeah, yeah. I, I come from prior to inter be, being introduced to the three principles. Um, uh, I was taught that the world that I experience is a result of my thinking, and but the emphasis was more on changing my thinking for the purpose of changing the what is more than it was just recognizing that I live in the feelings that I have are the result of my thinking. Yeah. I, it was my, Michael Neal perhaps would call enlightened outside in approach. It was, I wasn't busy changing the what is I was changing my thinking, but still for the purpose of changing this thinking that that's where my feeling comes from. Yeah. And when I hear stories about people that whose circumstances really aren't changing, they're still in prison. And yet they're having an entirely different experience of that, that, th that proves to me that it's not the circumstances that are creating that feeling it, that they can be happy independent of the circumstances simply by seeing it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Me too. Um, and a lot of the people that either visit, and the guys all come and work with me, that impacts them too greatly, um, which is why they go on and they create other projects and other things because they, they, get, they get to see, oh, it's real. <laughs> you really can have a different experience and, and have nothing in your outside world change. Um, and a really good example of that was was uh, we, we just did a smoke free, which is why I'm wearing this t shirt beyond cravings. We did a cravings um, program, and um, on the first one, a guy came along and he's been 19 years in prison, um, he's a lifer, and he um. Well, he identified himself as a lifer and he's already spent 19 years in prison. And, you know, he said, look, I've done every program, I've done blah, 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 you know, one, one, one of those things. Or I know all about psychology. And um, I just asked him to be there with an open mind, you know, and that at the end of the day, if he didn't like what he heard and there was nothing new for him, he could walk away with what he already knew and, you know, nothing bad had happened. And so he was like, yeah, okay, I can, I can do that. And um, he spent the morning really sort of quite sort of frowny. And in the afternoon, and this is not my doing, by the way, this is the guys running the group, you know, they're, they're, they're running the group. And in the afternoon, he, he comes back and um, you can see already that something's occurring. And he tells us um, on that Monday, so this was Wednesday, on the Monday, he was in the block, in the segregation unit, smashing up the block. That's his thing. He likes to fight and he likes to smash things up. And when a lot of the men use like the smashing up thing to get what they want. So if they want to be moved, if they want to move prison or if they want to um, get out of the way, you know, make themselves safe sometimes, they'll smash things up so that they can be put in isolation. Um, and it works. So, you know, it's like, it makes sense that they would do that. And, um, and he was in the block, flooding the block and, and, and fighting officers. And, and he said that was Monday and that's his normal thing. Um, like his weekend activity. And then on Wednesday he wakes up and his list is, his name's on the list to come to this program. And he, he said, I didn't even know, I, I didn't even know why, how I got on the list. And, um, it's a, it's a voluntary list that they put their own names down. So anyway, so he came along and he said, and what he'd seen in the morning was that he never thought about it before that when he floods the, the block, there were other prisoners in there that he is ruining their day. And he's not, so it's not just him that he's, he, he, he's looking at. It's like, well, I'm ruining their day. Like they're there for, for their own reasons and I'm ruining their day. Um, and he never realized before, because he's 19 years in prison, that 
it's his own doing. He said, I, I've always considered myself to be a lifer because this is, this is where I knew that I would spend the rest, of my la- the rest of my life. But actually, the last seven years of my sentence, um, I've just created it myself. Um, uh, uh, he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't believe it. I, I, actually, there's the possibility that I could change and not be in prison at some point. Um, he hasn't seen his daughter since she was three and um, he refuses to see her because he's on what they call closed visits. So it has to be behind the screen and he didn't want to see her behind the screen. And she's 18 now. Um, and he realized like, why am I stopping myself from having a relationship with my daughter just because of a screen? And so like this stuff was just pouring out of him and um, absolutely amazing. So we were running another group the following week. Um, so he said, yeah, of course, I want to come back. You know, absolutely wants to come back. So he came back. And within a week, within a week, he's set up a, um, a group for lifers in the prison because the prison isn't a, a lifer specialist prison. So there are loads of things that they don't get um, and things that he knows about that could be helpful. So he spe- set up a special group. Um, and got the um, blessing of the officers to do that because they know that's needed. So he's now a lifer rep. Um, he heard that we, uh, you know, we d- we're not getting any more funding. So he set up a, a sponsored charity bike ride and managed to get sponsors because he wants to pay for groups to carry on going. He got in touch with his mom who's told him about his daughter is actually pregnant and wants to come and visit. And in a, within a week, his, his whole life has changed completely. And, and he can't believe it himself. He's like, I, I've just been in a prison in my head for all these years. And now he can see how he can be valuable, how he, how he can help others. Um, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, it's, it's, it's a miracle, you know, and like literally nothing has changed. He's in the same cell, he's in the same place, you know, still on closed visits, all of those things. But of course, things will start to change. The outside will change now for him because he now sees opportunities, he now sees potential um he's now he's now of service to other men there's men in the room today that he was just helping straight away um there's there's a there's a guy in the room that self-harms and he he hadn't self-harmed for a month since um our last group with him and he did it last night and he and he spoke out and another guy said he'd never met before and and they're, they're totally totally different people and, and he said, you know, so-and-so, uh, I want to tell you, this is my name and I'm your friend. I mean, it's just, it's just like, I see they're going, wow. <laughs> and then I come home and go, my cat hasn't come in, you know, and I've got these, <laughs> these worries or I've got a bit of traffic <laughs> and I'm getting upset about it. So, yeah, you, you're right, Robert. It, it, like, blows away it, all the cobwebs that we create around thinking that we have to live in our circumstances because our circumstances aren't that they're not even real and today one of the men who was uh, one of the little argumentative group um he, he said <laughs> he said i'm an overthinker like so they they know you know they know what's going on for themselves he said i'm an overthinker and you know i've got this problem i've got that problem and i just don't know how to stop doing any of it and he was arguing for a while and suddenly he saw um oh that's the problem that i'm an overthinker but i don't have to do that oh that's the problem (laughs) because like yourself he was looking at if I wasn't an overthinker, then these things would change for me. But then he started seeing, oh, I don't even need to think about those things. If I'm not an overthinker, it's the fact that I'm an overthinker that's causing me the problem. <laughs> it's incredible. So thank you for bringing that. It's really helpful. Uh, hello, Dan. 
you just you just joined us oh can you can you hear me yes oh good i've been on the phone listening and uh, just was able to jump on so thank you so much jacqueline i've just uh been listening to you and your passion and your uh your service for i think it's a couple of months now uh, exploring his three principles. And I'm in the Seattle, Washington area, had a chance to uh, meet with George and Linda Pransky, and we'll get an opportunity to be with them this next week. But I've, I've been a coach and I've been a real estate coach. And in the last, since November, I've been studying counseling for uh, the recovery community. And so I'm very curious about what you've done and, and and your entrance into this field and and how I can continue to grow in that area. Right now I'm volunteering at intensive outpatient groups and just bringing what I know or even what I don't know of the three principles, but really just being there for people and being present with them. And that it is just thinking, you know, a lot of it and just, just being there as open up some things. So I just be curious to maybe if you could just share a little bit about what your program is or or how you how you bring that to the prisons and the communities and maybe some thoughts about moving this forward for myself okay um thank you for the question and for coming on uh so first of all you're not that far from portland then if you're in seattle so you should definitely Correct. look at anna debenham um who's, yeah. doing, who's doing this work in prisons in portland oregon um, and she's a great person and, and not that far away, nearer to you than I am. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so. You see, the thing is, it's, it, it was never very helpful to me when, um, oh, yeah, well, Robert's in Portland too. Mm. There you go. Um, it was never very helpful to me when people would say, I would ask a question like you just asked, and they would say, um, follow your wisdom. Um, because I used to go, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but how? <laughs> um, I know that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've got that bit, but, uh, but unfortunately it is true. But I'm going to try and say it in a different way. So you're right in that um, you think that places, especially uh, the sort of establishments like prisons and, and, and rehabs and so on, want some sort of thing um, and form uh, and so on. So they want a program and they, and they want this and they want that. And um, I encourage you to, to write something or do something along those lines because it gets so it gets through a lot of barriers when you hand over a piece of paper and say yeah you know like I developed a methodology and, I, and when I say oh yeah I've got a methodology they they're like something gets switched off in their heads oh yeah she's real she's got a methodology um they no one ever comes and checks so we follow in the methodology of course and um and of course then there's the research and the the, the evidence that evidence in that we're doing it and and so on and that sort of you know that's another tick box but i can absolutely say hand on heart that it is an illusion to think that you either need those things or that um there is some template to follow so my um encouragement would be that if if the, if you're inclined to develop something like a program or whatever is that just just go with that go with what you uh think best it should look like because i i developed a program so so here's my journey is that i went right okay suddenly i'm going to be working in prisons i need a program so i developed a 12 week program um, I read Jack Pransky's uh, book, Healthy Thinking, Living, something like that. It's like a curriculum. Um, uh, every week I went in and I had exercises and, 
uh, all of all of this stuff within by week two I realized 12 weeks is way too long I'm doing 10 weeks I don't know why I realized that I just felt it so um, straight away I changed my program it's now 10 weeks long um, and I ran two or three of those um, reasonably well and then um, within so that takes about three months so after I think it was after about three months is when um, we had a an amazing visit from Dan and Chip Chipman um, and when they came in the room and they sat down and they had a conversation and did nothing else and men were dropping like flies <laughs> I was like mm. oh, I think I need to do more of that so mm. So literally, like everything changed again. I was literally like, right, okay, forget the exercises, forget, like, let, let's just keep going back to this conversation. I'm not saying that exercises are a bad thing, and just saying that I realised I was I was way overdoing that, and and also because I was evidencing it, I was writing everything down. So I wasn't I was I was a lot in my head. I wasn't leaving enough mm. space. So then it changed again. Um, and then I realized, you know, from, from sort of practical purposes, if I, if this, this was now a business and I wanted to go to the business that 10 weeks is too long. And so I wanted to do a three day program. So then I changed it again and, and again, and again, and again. And if you look at my journey over the last three years, I probably have had, you know, several iterations of the program. Um, from a, from an evidencing point of view, um, I've had to sort of go, right, that's, you know, stick with that for so long, but but in my mind it moves on really quickly. To to this last one, which is the smoking cessation program, which was designed as so that they say, We've got some money. Can you come in and do this? Can you can you do something about cravings? Like, yeah, we can do that's right up my street. Um and how much money have you got? Is you know a good question. And what are you looking for? And so I'm basing everything that I do on what, what do they want? Because I can do anything. I can write any program. I can answer any question. What, what do they want answered? Um, so they wanted to see, um, can men understand, you know, cope with cravings? So, of course, I take that and I sort of back it into the principles and, and say, okay, well, what does that look like to me? So I designed a program which was a six-week training program for the men and then four two-day immersion programs for the rest of the population and then our men are meant to support the rest of the population. And after the first six-week one, we ran the two-day immersion. One of the facilitators ran it with one of the peer mentors it was so amazing. I was like, clearly the peer mentors need to run these programs. So the next three were run by the peer mentors. So if I had a syllabus, I'd be like, oh, it's already changed. Oh, rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it. And that's the reality of it is that because it's fresh, because it's in the moment, because you're constantly listening um, to a deeper wisdom than our, our own, you, it, it changes but then I talk very I'm going to change what I was just about to say because I've just realized the reason why people buy me trust me have me come in is because I am 100% certain that I can work with whatever it is that they're giving me. So they feel, they feel that. And the rest is like a little bit of icing. So once they feel that, I, I know, so they feel it, so they know, and then we can put something together that, that looks like what they think it should look like. Is, is that helpful? That is. What I'm hearing is you just, you come with your heart. You know you can serve. You know you can make a difference. 
and you're open to what the need is versus I'm going to bring all of this stuff in and make it work that way. It just, and, and I'm also hearing, I don't know that you said it, but just being okay with maybe I won't know, or maybe I don't know. And I trust inner wisdom to show up in the moment um, that will provide the value and maybe the program. And it sounds like programs have actually developed from that. Uh, to where there is now maybe some something that you you train other people to do um, just from being open, but not coming, okay, I got to have all this curriculum. Maybe there was some of that to start out with. And then you realize that, that that's not where the juice was. Perfect. Beautifully put. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah amazing amazing and and yeah. you know um my website has the research on it you know feel free to download that um I, i'm i'm happy i'm happy 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 to support um but what you just said there absolutely spot on and, mm. and you can't go wrong with that it's in, it's impossible because you're open you're listening um I mean, the, the prison don't fund me, but that's a logistical, so that, that's just a thing. Um, I've had four governors in the three years that I've been there, um, you know, all sorts of things, but, but they're, they all know me. They all know my reputation. I sit on, you know, I sit on drug strategy. I sit on rehab culture. I sit on all, the, all of these meetings and I'm always listening. Um, I started attending now the morning briefing where they talk about um, what happened the day before this man cut himself, this man kicked off, you know, they, they talk about those things. It's a 15 minute briefing. And I asked the operational guy there, you know, is it, is it okay for me to sit in? And he said, Oh yes, yes. Any, everybody's welcome because um, you may hear about men that you can then exclude from your group. And I said, oh, that's interesting because actually I heard about men that I can help. And he, he you could see his brain went, <laughs> um, and he went, right, yes, of course. <laughs> um, so, so, and that's what I'm, I'm there listening, like, oh, right there, because they, they don't know, they can't see the governor, the new governor who's, who I've had an appointment with. He, he doesn't know because this understanding is invisible until you know, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, it's my job to, to show where I, can, where I can fit, where I can be useful. What are their, what are their issues? Well, then, you know, and then I ask myself, so their issues of violence, well, I can definitely help with that. Oh, there are issues of, of drugs. Well, I can definitely help with that. I'll tell you one other thing that has is, is, um, just occurred to me that has been useful. And I've only just realized it, um, you know, very recently. Is that, and, and that's, but that doesn't make me responsible. So, like, it's not that then they look at me and I have to fix all the drug problems. Actually, in the drug strategy meeting, when they were talking about the drug problems, sometimes I'm thinking, I wonder why no one ever says, well, clearly that program doesn't work because we've still got all those problems. They just, they live in a world where they accept there are going to be drug problems. So I'm sort of off the hook. <laughs> so I can literally do whatever I like. I can, I can find ways I can help and I can stealthily then help in all these areas as best I can. And the fact that there are still issues seems to be nothing to do with me just the fact that, that that's what goes on and eventually in time i hope that we're in so many of the areas that 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 we we really can reduce the problem um and we really can sort but at the moment you know we're just sort of focused on one area um but it's quite cool not to not to have the responsibility you know and, and to know well i'm just doing the best with of a bad job um <laughs> and they're like they're grateful because they see the, the good things that you can do yeah love it <laughs> thank you so much for your work and just for showing up so incredibly thank you really impactful
How are we doing? How is everyone else? What's Juliet look like? There's the questions that keep me awake at night. I'll tell you a little, um, um, a little story. I don't know. Did anyone live stream the Free Pee UK? You did. Oh. I did. In fact, uh, I was just thinking about that when you were talking to um, Dan. Um, somebody made the comment about how you, or maybe perhaps it was you, you said it yourself, where you said, um, I say, yeah, I can do that. And then afterwards you go, how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's exactly, that's exactly how it happened for me. It's like, can you write a business case? Yeah, of course. What's a business case? <laughs> Can you do a program about cravings? Yeah, of course. Right, okay. <laughs> How do we do that? Um, yeah, I was very lucky. You know, I, I had an insight earlier on, which was, which was I can do anything. And that just holds me and, you know, that keeps feeding me. That, that is... That is it for me. You know, that's the volcano that just keeps, keeps going. It keeps flowing. Um, but I mentioned the 3P UK because uh, you saw the guy Alfie on, on yeah. stage. Yeah. And well, th that's, that's where I started getting just how impactful this is because he, was, he had an, a radically different experience, but he's still in exactly the same environment he started in. But he's different now. Yes, totally. Totally. And um, he's not unusual. That's, that's, that's the thing, <laughs> you know, like he is, he's unique and he's Alfie and he, and he's amazing, but that's what we're seeing all the time. And, and for ourselves too, you know, when we, when we get out of our own way, when we get out of that, that prison of our thinking, um, he talked about, something at the conference which really impacted me which is that he has this whole thing about um spoiled good so there's no bad it's all spoiled good so every every if you look at bad and, and i'm probably doing it a terrible disservice so do watch the video but if you look at everything bad can't be done for bad sake whereas good can so a kind act can be done just for a kind act for you get nothing from it you might be in a bad mood that day uh, but you can do this kind of act where a bad thing always has a need behind it. So, you know, money, power, whatever. Um, so all it is is spoiled good. It's, it's good gone wrong. Um, and he, he's, he's had this insight, you know, he had it quite a long time ago. He's talked about it a lot. It's very, very profound, even though it's something that's hard to talk about. And I loved it when he said, which is the bit that impacted me. You know it's true because when we fall out of our personal thinking, there's only one place to fall, which is into love. You, you don't go, oh, where, shall I, where will I fall? You know, will, will I fall into bad or will I fall into... There's only one place to fall and we all fall into love. And I thought, yeah, of course, that's true, right? That is absolutely true. Um, and I rang him, um, I spoke to him this week, and he's, he's still buzzing from the conference. He, he absolutely loved that experience. But he's had a, um, a further insight about that. And he's such a tease because he said, but it, it's not for the phone. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to talk about it face to face. So I'm like, oh no, I want to know. <laughs> um, and last night he texted me and, and told me to read some chapters of the Bible <laughs> and that he would explain, explain his philosophy. Um, and I'm reading the chapters of the Bible and all I'm seeing uh, is judgment in my head. I, and I'm like reading, reading these words and going, what? Don't fall in with a bad woman. What? And, and I'm going, okay, he's seen something different. <laughs> it's a bit like the enlightened gardener. You know, the men see something different. And I've, I've got all this judgment. So um, I'm so very, very blessed to, to have these people in my life and keep, keep me learning and 
keep me fresh. He was a massive hit, wasn't he? He really, he really blew everybody away. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a really good start to things. <laughs> I know, amazing. Oh, thanks for speaking, Julia. Well, I can try and bring myself on the visual, but I'm, I'm, I sit here with my iPad and I'm sort of all slumped and I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't worry. <laughs> you don't get recorded though, apparently. So it's oh, only right. that, we'll see true? you. All right. Okay. So, so. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> you might have seen me from a distance. <laughs> but I think I'm going away again now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really nice to see you briefly. Very good to see you, and you you were marvellous. And so Thank and you, you. And you radiate lovely good feelings. So, so Thank you. I think we're quite close to time, aren't we? That's this has been so cool. And just is it Christian? Christian? You don't want to say hello because everyone else has. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm sitting here on Salt Spring Island. Oh, how lovely. I'll be there in June. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll see you then. See you then. Yeah. I look forward to it. I've really enjoyed this. It's so, so cool to um, <clears throat> hang out with you all and have this conversation. And it really felt like we, we all got in it together. Um, so thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. I, I absolutely love this talk and, and I love the work you're doing. It's, it's fascinating to me that um, to, in my head, being in prison would be one of the worst things. And to, to hear the stories of people who just find complete freedom, um, you know, even though their circumstances are you know, prison and the four walls are, um, is, is just such a testament to, to what this understanding really can bring to people. So, lovely. Thank you everyone who attended live. I really appreciate that you're here. And um, the next webinar is on June 13th, 2 p.m. Eastern time with Wendy Segesi. So hope to see you then as well. Thanks again, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.